Hello everybody and welcome to another amazing episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This channel is brought to you in part by Patreon supporters. If you would like to help decide what topics get covered on the channel and get your name in the special thanks at the end of each episode, you can sign up for as little as $1 per month over at patreon.com slash marymarvelite. The link is in the description below. For this week's episode, we're taking a look at the origin and history of Jason Philip Mackendale Jr. His early life hasn't been revealed in detail, but we do know the broad strokes of his military career. Born in Boston, Mackendale earned a master's degree in electrical engineering and physics from MIT before joining the Marines. He also received extensive training from the CIA and served as a special operative for four years. After being dismissed for unnecessary brutality, Mackendale plied his skills as an international mercenary, utilizing government weapons he'd squirreled away. He often worked with terrorist groups, putting him into conflict with other mercenaries like Mark Spector, and was stripped of his American citizenship after training armies in foreign nations. At some point during all of this, his wife Karen also divorced him and claimed full custody of their son, Jay. Then, with more and more costumed superhumans emerging, Mackendale decided to cash in and created a colorful persona for himself, becoming the first Jack-O-Lantern. Under this identity, he utilized a variety of gases and weapons, wore a bulletproof helmet, and rode a disc-shaped hovercraft called a Pogo Platform. He and his team of mercenaries, the Freebooters, enjoyed a string of successes until a caper in New York put him into conflict with the robotic hero, Machine Man. Jack O'Lantern attempted to defeat the hero with an explosive, but Machine Man trapped him inside a force field where Mackendale was defeated by his own grenade. The mercenary survived and was taken into a prison hospital, but authorities were unable to remove his costume. Before anything else could be done with him, Mackendale awakened and started taking hostages. This time he was thwarted by the superhuman vigilante Spider-Man who physically outmatched him. Jack-O-Lantern tried to escape, but he was stopped by the colorfully costumed hero. But this was far from the end and Mackendale would have many more encounters with Spider-Man following these events. After regaining his freedom, he was hunted by the highly skilled Simkarian mercenary Silver Sable. She and her wild pack, a group of Nazi hunters turned bounty hunters, were hired by a governmental body in southern Africa where Mackendale had previously operated. When Sable joined forces with Spider-Man to catch him, Jack-O-Lantern hired a group of villains called the Sinister Syndicate to fight on his behalf. Around that time, Mackendale also had his first encounter with the man who would become his rival, a costumed criminal known as the Hobgoblin. You see, the Goblin had been arrested and unmasked as Spider-Man's ally, Flash Thompson. Except that was all a setup, because Flash had been framed by the real Hobgoblin, whose identity was still unknown at the time. Of course, not knowing this, Jack-O-Lantern intended on freeing Thompson and forging an alliance with him. That caught the attention of the real Hobgoblin, who attacked Mackendale for interfering in his plans, beginning the enmity between the two villains. After that, abandoned by his crew, the Freebooters, Jack-O-Lantern began working for the Arranger, an agent of Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. Meanwhile, the Hobgoblin had partnered with another criminal, the Rose, who was secretly the Kingpin's son, Richard. When a gang war erupted between the various criminal factions in New York, Mackendale performed poorly and fled from battle whenever he felt he was outclassed. During a truce between the Kingpin's organization and the Rose, Mackendale even left Hobgoblin to battle Spider-Man alone. His unreliability soon led to him being fired by the Kingpin himself. So wanting to reinvent himself, Mackendale hired another criminal, the Foreigner, to deal with his rival. Discovering that the Hobgoblin was actually Daily Bugle reporter Ned Leeds, the Foreigner sent an elite squad to ambush and kill their target. His costume and equipment were taken and Leeds' body was tied up and left to be found. Abandoning his jack-o'-lantern identity, Mackendale took over as the boastful new Hobgoblin, and the general public was unaware that the Hobgoblin was ever Ned Leeds. But 
truthfully, it never really was, because, like Flash Thompson, Leeds was just another pawn who'd been manipulated by the real Hobgoblin, a man named Roderick Kingsley. Happy to quietly fade away, Kingsley retired with his ill-gotten wealth, content to allow Mackendale to run free. The former jack-o'-lantern likely wished to benefit from the Hobgoblin's reputation. However, one person to know what had occurred was the Kingpin, and he passed on evidence to Spider-Man both to discredit Mackendale and to motivate Spider-Man into attacking his rival, the Foreigner. Furthermore, Mackendale didn't fare that much better in this identity than he had in the old one. After all, the real Hobgoblin had used a modified version of the original Green Goblin's formula, putting his strength on par with Spider-Man's. Mackendale had his own skills and Kingsley's equipment, but he was still only human. He later tried to get his own hands on the formula by attacking Harry Osborn, the second Green Goblin and son of the first. But Harry didn't actually have the compound either, and so it was all for naught. Now, around this time, New York was also the site of a demonic invasion from the hellish limbo dimension known as Other Place, an event called the Inferno. Growing desperate, Mackendale approached the lead demon, Nastir, and offered his soul in exchange for power. While he had no use for such a thing, Nastir was amused and bonded Mackendale with a demon from Limbo. This triggered a physical transformation, and soon he began to resemble an actual goblin. But he had finally attained a level of strength similar to that of his predecessor. He tried to use this new power as an underworld hitman, but still had little success. In another attempt to defeat Spider-Man, he joined forces with the misguided villain, Carrion. This too ended poorly when Carrion got between Spider-Man and Hobgoblin while the latter was throwing a pumpkin bomb. The demonic Mackendale survived and went into hiding underground until he was found by Dr. Octopus and recruited into his new Sinister Six. After Ock's scheme ultimately failed, Hobgoblin's personality grew increasingly influenced by the demon inside of him. This demon was from a fanatical sect known as the Righteous, who hated their own kind and thought that all demons should be killed. Mackendale began thinking he had a duty to cleanse the world of evil, and a considerable body count followed him. He even disfigured a small boy he'd taken as an apprentice before finally being stopped by Spider-Man and Ghost Rider. During this whole demonic era, Hobgoblin also encountered the likes of Doctor Strange, Darkhawk, and Moon Knight. Things came to a head when he battled Spider-Man along with the former and then present Ghost Riders, Johnny Blaze and Danny Ketch. All three struck Hobgoblin at the same time, including a blast of hellfire from Blaze's shotgun. After that, Mackendale began painfully and uncontrollably transforming back and forth between human and demonic forms, each side fighting for control. After another brief stint with the Sinister Six, the two halves of the Hobgoblin finally ripped apart from one another, separating into two distinct beings. Mackendale was once again only human without enhanced strength or powers. Meanwhile, the demon donned a darker costume and became known as the Demo Goblin. Once again utilizing his stolen goblin gear, Mackendale briefly worked with Alfredo Morelli an aspiring kingpin who, at the time, was posing as Wilson Fisk's son, Richard. The goblin quickly betrayed the fake fist in an attempt at making a quick profit, but his plan to manipulate Spider-Man to his advantage backfired and he was forced to flee. No better off than he was before, Mackendale got back to training to hone his strength and reflexes once again. Still determined to repair his reputation, he took jobs from the foreigner to clear his debt. He also incorporated more traditional weapons into his armory, which he was more familiar with. During this time, he was hunted by the Demo Goblin, and the two became bitter enemies. And of course, he continued to have run-ins with the likes of Spider-Man, Moon Knight, Sleepwalker, Deathlock, and the Beast, but he failed to rebuild his reputation as intended. Growing desperate once again, Mackendale found another path to power when he acquired a journal belonging to the deceased supervillain, Craven the Hunter. 
Traveling to Russia, he made a bargain with Craven's son, Vladimir, the Grim Hunter. In exchange for the journal, Vladimir would use his father's strength-enhancing potions on Mackendale. The Grim Hunter agreed, mostly so he could use Mackendale as a guinea pig. Craven's potions had always been temporary, but Vladimir wanted a more permanent increase in strength and decided to test a new version on Mackendale. The odds were against him, but ultimately something in his biology responded favorably to the treatment, endowing the Hobgoblin with increased strength once again. Returning to New York, he decided to use his new power to take care of the Demo Goblin once and for all. When their battle spilled over into a church, Mackendale slammed the demon against a large, heavy pillar. With the column damaged, it was actually the Demo Goblin who held it in place to stop it from falling on a young child. While Spider-Man saved the girl and her mother, Mackendale escaped, and the pillar collapsed, killing the Demo Goblin. After that, Mackendale broke into his ex-wife's home and tried to kidnap his son, Jay. At the same time, both he and Spider-Man were pursued by a woman named Cold Heart, who sought to eliminate dangerous superhumans. In the end, Spider-Man rescued the boy, who convinced Cold Heart not to attack the hero. After the death of Dr. Octopus, Mackendale reunited with several members of the Sinister Six in a failed scheme to steal Ox mechanical arms. During this adventure, the Hobgoblin first encountered Spider-Man's clone, the Scarlet Spider. Since both Dr. Octopus and the Grim Hunter were killed by another clone of Spider-Man named Kane, the remaining members of the Sinister Six later recruited several others to form a Sinister Seven, with the goal of eliminating Kane. Spider-Man, wearing the Scarlet Spider's costume, interfered in the subsequent battle and stopped both Kane and the villains from killing one another. When Mackendale later tried to strike at his ex-wife's new husband, he was opposed by the heroic Green Goblin, teenager Phil Urich. While Urich was inexperienced, Mackendale fled when veteran hero Ben Grimm arrived. After that, he allied himself with Mendel Strom, a villain who was previously known as the Robot Master, but at the time was going by Gaunt. Strom further upgraded the Hobgoblin with cybernetic implants and a bionic eye. With a new costume and retractable blades, Mackendale again battled Ben Riley, who was previously the Scarlet Spider, but by this time had taken over as Spider-Man. The Hobgoblin was also provided with four cyborg underlings, collectively referred to as Cell 12. But after they failed to meet his expectations, Mackendale petulantly killed them. After that, with the Hobgoblin working alone and Spider-Man being supported by Peter Parker, Jason Philip Mackendale was finally captured and arrested. Surprisingly, I'm pretty sure this is the first time Mackendale had been taken into custody since his initial defeats at the hands of Machine Man and Spider-Man. It seemed that this time it was going to stick, but he still managed to throw a wrench in the gears by publicly outing Ned Leeds as the previous Hobgoblin. But all of this ended up annoying the real original Hobgoblin, Roderick Kingsley, who infiltrated the prison and attacked Mackendale. And that was the end of the man who was the original Jack-O-Lantern, left as a smoldering skeleton in a jail cell. Of course, he was far from the only one to use that identity, and there have been a veritable cavalcade of Jack-O-Lanterns after him. The second man to wear the costume was Stephen Mark Levins, another mercenary who somehow obtained Mackendale's old equipment while he was acting as the Hobgoblin. Levins made sporadic appearances and battled heroes like Captain America, but was eventually killed by the Punisher. He was buried in his hometown of Sleepy Hollow, but Levins' corpse was reanimated when it was possessed by a fragment of the demon Lucifer and battled the Ghost Rider. After that, Levins' brother also briefly took up the role. Sacrificing a young girl, he made a deal with the devil to gain supernatural powers in an attempt to avenge his brother. Unrelated to either of them was another pumpkin-themed villain who wore a costume that was nearly identical to Mackendale's Mad Jack. This version of the Jack-O-Lantern was actually more closely tied to the Spider-Man villain Mysterio than any other Jack-O-Lantern. In truth, Mad Jack was actually two people working together. 
Daniel Burkhart, the second Mysterio, and Maguire Beck, the cousin of the first Mysterio. So if you want to know more about Mad Jack, you can watch my video on Mysterio. Anyway, shortly before his secret war in Latveria, Nick Fury apprehended yet another jack-o'-lantern, but he identified him as Jason Mackendale, which doesn't make a great deal of sense. It's not supposed to be a son or anything, Mackendale's full name was indeed Jason Philip Mackendale Jr. And weirdly, even though S.H.I.E.L.D. knew that Mackendale was killed by the Hobgoblin, they also list Mad Jack and Maguire Beck as aliases for him, which is just completely wrong. In any event, this specific version of the character never appears again, and so whether or not he is supposed to be Mackendale, this appearance and the misinformation surrounding it should probably be disregarded as faulty intelligence. More importantly, after that, there was an enigmatic and sadistically murderous jack-o'-lantern. This jack was supposedly raised by one of the villainous crime masters and battled Flash Thompson while he was Agent Venom. During his tenure, he claimed to have killed every other person to have used the jack-o'-lantern identity, so one can safely assume that during this time he was the only active jack-o'-lantern but he would also meet his own end while interfering in a battle between Deadpool and the Black Panther. And since then, his gear was found by a small-time criminal who claimed the identity for himself, and so the cycle continues. As for Mackendale, we may not actually have seen the end of him. During the events of the Clone Conspiracy, an unstable Ben Riley used the Jackal's cloning technology to resurrect over a dozen dead supervillains in an attempt to give them a second chance. And among them was both a Jack-o'-lantern and a Hobgoblin. By the end of that whole debacle, most of the clones broke down and dissolved, but some of the villains reportedly survived and escaped. And so it's entirely possible that Jason Mackendale is still out there waiting for his chance to return. And if not, well, as long as there are others willing to put on the mask, we may never see the end of the Hobgoblin or the Jack-o'-lantern. But that's all I've got for you this week, so thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more Marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next, and as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me. Including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here, and my Twitch channel where I stream every weekend. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!